Good evening, and I'm really glad to have you all here once again. This is our corner of YouTube where the many students and fans of meteorology get together and look at interesting details about what's going on out there. A major winter storm struck the southern Rockies Wednesday and Thursday. Snow is still coming down heavy at Raton and Clayton. The state is under an emergency declaration. This is not just a light dusting of snow. This is a real howler that prompted blizzard warnings, which are still in effect. Wet, heavy snow, high winds knocked out power for over 50,000 people there. But 1.5 million is now earmarked to light a fire under the efforts to get the power back on. Some good news there. And I thought you might find this interesting. This is Interstate 40 looking east around Moriarty, which is east of Albuquerque. This starts out yesterday afternoon, goes through the overnight hours, and you can see that traffic there, lots of starting and stopping, and I guess some of that is probably them pulling trucks out of the ditch. So you have to get the traffic stopped to get some of that work done. But uh, looking a little bit better today, but not completely clear just yet. Still a few problem areas on Interstate 40 there. In the passes, the Sandia Mountains and Interstate 25 completely closed from Las Vegas, New Mexico, all the way to Pueblo. All right, let's take a look at that surface map. We are looking at a blend of the GFS for the Isobars, those black lines. We've also got the Canadian RDPS for the 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness. That's that concentric dashed red line right there centered on New Mexico, showing that cold air piled up around the Sangre de Cristos. This is a blend of nine-hour model forecast with current METAR and synoptic data, front positions done by me. And if you want to try out this program, you can go to weathergraphics.com and download it, and you'll want to download the crib data to get these kinds of isoplots. So that's kind of a look at what's going on here. And uh, we've got a strong frontal system going through Texas. The triple point located around Hillsboro, Texas, we've got a warm front extending east towards Lufkin and Alexandria, cold front south towards San Antonio and Monterey, and an occluded front going up into western Oklahoma. Storms going up along these boundaries due to very rich tropical air making its way north. You can see those dew points are in the mid-70s along the Texas coast and very high precipitable waters funneling northwestward into Colorado, helping to fuel that winter storm which continues to rage in northeastern New Mexico and eastern Colorado. We still have Hurricane Raphael in the western Gulf. The European model did a great job with that westward path, currently at 3 p.m., 85 knots, making it a low-end Category 2 storm. 967 millibars on that pressure, filling at about one millibar per hour. And it continues to move west at nine miles an hour. It's expected to become quasi-stationary and maybe start drifting south next week. Those winds will gradually subside, and by tomorrow we will see tropical storm strength and tropical depression by Tuesday. Taking a look at the weather across the northeastern U.S., Cold advection settles in once again, replacing record highs yesterday. We were up to 84 at Washington National Airport. Mild weather in the northeastern U.S. today. Highs are in the upper 60s from New York City down to Philadelphia with 50s in the Great Lakes. Winds are gusting 25 to 35 knots across the mountains of New England. We've got wind advisories tonight and tomorrow for western Maine and northern New Hampshire. And a red flag warning throughout a huge area of the northeastern corridor. Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, east to Cape Cod and Long Island, west to the Poconos, Harrisburg, Altoona. That's due to west winds gusting to 30 miles an hour and relative humidity down to 25%. In the southeastern U.S., abundant tropical air. Yesterday, numerous record overnight minimums set in Florida and the central Gulf Coast. We're talking about warm overnight lows down to 74 at Jacksonville, 76 at Tampa, 80 at Miami. Again, these are overnight lows, not highs. 
Birmingham, 67. Those are all records, 68 at Huntsville and 71 at Baton Rouge. And once again, the culprit, abundant tropical air indicated by the telltale appearance of high precipitable water values. Some of that moisture being brought northward by Hurricane Raphael, basically slinging tropical air to the northwest. And we can just take a look at this loop and watch the demise of Raphael out there in the western gulf. The GFS kind of loops it around and finally sends it towards the Yucatan by next Thursday as a very weak low pressure area. In the south central U.S., we've got plenty of moisture flowing northward as well. As we mentioned, mid-70s dew points coming into southeastern Texas. Down to the south, you can see a little bit of Raphael. This whole area under the influence of a tropical air mass, but out to the west, cooler, drier air from the Pacific crossing the Rockies and entering west Texas as a dry slot. It was hot yesterday across South Texas. Laredo got up to 93 degrees. College Station got up to 89. Both of those set records for the date. And the Storm Prediction Center does have a slight risk of severe storms from the DFW area up to Wichita Falls and down towards Gatesville and Stephenville. And we do have storms underway. This complex in East Texas is associated with the warm front and also the plentiful supply of moisture with that low-level jet traversing the warm front. The area further to the west, that's along the occluded front and pretty close to that triple point area around Hillsboro. At this time, a disorganized area of thunderstorms moving across Tarrant County, about to head into Dallas and almost coming up towards Waxahachie there. Much of the support for this convection coming from this low-level jet. The strongest winds in northwestern Oklahoma, 40 to 50 knots, but in Texas, 20 to 30 knots. And we will see a weakening trend going into tonight as the main area of upper forcing lifts into the central plains. A couple of ways we can see that upper forcing is with the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This shows a jet max through West Texas around Midland up to Caprock. Strongest winds right there on the Caprock, about 80 knots at 500 millibars and arcing around towards Denver. And that puts much of this area under a strong southerly band of 40 to 50 knot winds. And of course, that will be heading north by 1 a.m. Much of the stronger winds heading into Kansas. 70 knots there with a mid-level jet about like that. And then by tomorrow, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., lifting up into Iowa and Nebraska. We can also visualize it on the Q vectors. This is a chart that is in demand by many of our viewers. Large area of Q vector convergence from the Cap Rock all the way back in Colorado. So some of that forcing extending well to the northwest of that occluded front. And then going into tonight... Everything lifts north into Kansas by 1 a.m. and into Nebraska and Iowa during the day tomorrow. So you can compare it there with the water vapor imagery. And it's not just the upward motion indicated by the blue. It's also the strong downward motion. Basically from Midland, the Pecos River Valley, all the way to Childress, Vernon, and Lawton. See what we're talking about right there. That's the area of downward motion. A lot of it taking place over New Mexico, but the cloud field a little bit more extensive due to the very strong instability. In northeastern New Mexico, they are under a blizzard warning until 11 p.m. That includes Clayton, Las Vegas, and Raton. One to six inches of snow expected with over a foot in the mountains. Winter storm warnings in Colorado, across a very wide area, along the US 287 corridor, down the Interstate 25 corridor, and all the way back into the San Luis Valley. They are looking for an additional 6 to 12 inches of snow. And also a winter weather advisory from Cheyenne, Fort Collins, down the front range in the lower elevations, expecting about 1 to 3 inches of snow. This should all start clearing out early tomorrow. 
the satellite imagery showing most of our problems down there in Colorado, Kansas, where it changes over to rain. And as you go north, things do clear out pretty nicely. Kind of a pleasant day in the Dakotas and Minnesota. Let's take a look at the southwestern U.S. And there you can see some snow in the higher elevations. Looks like wet snow did fall in the Painted Desert. Most of that appears to be gone. I imagine the uh, ground is rather warm. Today, however, Phoenix only 70 degrees for a high temperature. Down from 100 just a couple weeks ago. 67 at Los Angeles today and low 70s in the San Joaquin Valley. Air quality alerts for Southern California. They had Santa Ana winds the past couple days. The Inland Empire, San Fernando Valley, is under wood-burning bands below 3,000 feet. That includes fire logs and pellets, whether indoor or outdoor. And that ban runs through tomorrow afternoon. And not much to talk about in the northwestern U.S. Looks like another Pacific system inbound. We're kind of losing track of each one. There's so many coming in. It's like every two days, maybe. Air stagnation alert issued for the lower Snake River Valley, including Boise in Ontario and into southeastern Oregon due to light winds and inversion conditions. Similar alert in northern Idaho. Air stagnation advisory around Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint. It will continue to be quite active in the Pacific. Very high EPO index with rather zonal flow all the way from Japan across the North Pacific and into the Pacific Northwest. So what we have going on west of Washington, part of this complex at about 135 west, we can take a look at the Pacific charts and kind of show you what's going on. A little bit of thunder out there, you hear that? We are getting that warm air advection here as well. However, we are not fully plugged into the subtropics. Let's take a look at the integrated vapor transport for the Pacific. There's our system off of Washington and just not really all that much moisture with it. This next system looks pretty interesting out there in the central North Pacific. Really picks up there 1,100 IVT values. However, it gets stretched out and not much heads into the West Coast area. Maybe Sunday, some IVTs of about 400. Here comes another shot. That one looks pretty good there around Wednesday. So that could be a very rainy day for Oregon and Washington. This one looks, uh, yeah, that's definitely tapping the subtropical region. However, it weakens by the time it gets to the West Coast area. Okay, let's take a look at that forecast, starting out with this evening. Very active in Kansas and Oklahoma. The system continues to lift northeast overnight and starts exiting Colorado. Just getting some of that wrap around there. By midday tomorrow, looking like this. General thunderstorm risk throughout all of the Ozarks, the lower Mississippi River Valley, rains from Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, into Nebraska and South Dakota. And we get that snow changeover around Denver. The Weather Prediction Center does have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall across central Louisiana. Then we go into Sunday. There's the Sunday afternoon chart. Looks like a very rainy day across the Great Lakes. The Appalachians, the Allegheny region, general thunderstorm risk in the lower Mississippi River Valley, Kentucky, Tennessee to Louisiana, and temperatures warming into the 80s in the lower deserts. New rains moving into Seattle and Portland with this next weather system. We go into Monday. There's the Monday evening map. Rains moving into New England, Ontario, Quebec. Rain spreading across the Pacific Northwest with snow showers in the higher elevations. So it's another blustery winter-like day for the northwestern U.S. We go into Tuesday, another system traversing the Rockies, moving into the Great Plains area, and yet another system moving inland. And as we saw on the IVT charts, this one will have much higher IVT values, so probably some very heavy rains. Astoria, North Bend, Portland, Seattle, to Quileute, and of course, in the Vancouver area, where we do have a few viewers. And we'll take you through the rest of the sequence. 
some cold air moving into the Midwest, the 540 decameter thickness line, all the way down to St. Louis and Chicago. So this will be associated with some very cold air. A respite for Thursday and Friday. Again, the Pacific systems dominate. This next one comes across the northern Rockies for next Friday. And looks like by next weekend, another plunge of cold air coming south. This one probably headed more south through the Great Plains. So this could be our next prospect for very cold air across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. This is pretty far into the future, but I'm starting to see some signs here around the third week of November that we could see our first freeze south of Interstate 40. One last check of the thunderstorms in Texas. They are increasing in aerial coverage, already extending to just southeast of Waco. Fortunately, no severe storms. Echo tops running about 20 to 30,000 and higher closer to that moist axis, up to about 45,000 at Crockett, Texas. Going further south, well, I don't have the other radars pulled up, but maybe I can bring one up and check out Houston. And of course, they are within an area of 70s dew points. We wait for the radar to come up and we'll probably see a few thunderstorms down there. Uh, yeah, some scattered showers west of Houston, Hempstead down to Katy, and other showers out towards Woodville. So we'll continue going through the remainder of the evening, but of course the stronger dynamics lifting up to the north. But yeah, it's a very clustered appearance, not very organized, but certainly some very prolific anvil production. And looking further up to the north, this gets more into the upper air dynamics and just wrapping around the north side of that upper level low. And as we clear out in New Mexico, we can see that there was extensive snow west of Santa Rosa all the way to the Sandia Mountains. That's a rather solid area of snow cover there, extending as far south as maybe Ruidoso. Okay, guys, got to get this packaged and uploaded. So I hope all of you have a great weekend. Please comment and let us know how the weather's been in your part of the country. I know we've been kind of hyper-focused on New Mexico and Colorado, but even if you're there, please report and let us know what you all saw. For you viewers in Vancouver, let us know what kind of weather you've had. And if you have any questions about the program or anything like that, please post and I'll try to get those answered. All right. Take care, and we will see you again on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Bye-bye.